Welcome back to American Latino TV. I'm Valerie Ortiz. For Cali Columbia native Diana Trujillo, her interest in space started when she was a kid, when she grappled with the idea of just how much there is out there to explore. Diana pursued a degree in aerospace mechanics, and it wasn't long after graduation that she was accepted to a prestigious program called the NASA Academy in Maryland. Now she spends her days and many nights building launch vehicles and satellites for space travel. I think we can say that Diana is a little accomplished. Yeah, you know, maybe just a little bit. So for more on the amazing work this rocket scientist does, check this out. It's a story you'll find only on American Latino TV. Heroes is brought to you by the U.S. Army. They're strong, then there's Army Strong. Hello, my name is Diana Trujillo, and my job is mission lead of the Mars Curiosity rover in NASA. The Mars Curiosity rover is a rover that is currently on Mars. It's the biggest rover that we have landed on another surface of another planet. Uh, currently, the main mission objective of this uh, rover is to find out if there were compositions, at some point, compositions of life in the surface of Mars. Was there ever any life on this planet? The cost of this mission is considerably high. It's like 2.5 or so billion dollars that we had spent on this mission, but the return on investment is extremely high as well. We're trying to determine what happened to another planet. We're trying to determine if there was life in another planet. We're trying to determine also what happened to Mars that could happen to Earth. How can we actually take care of our own Earth so that we don't end up having, you know, no water or no atmosphere or things as detrimental as Mars looks like right now. Investigating the dunes lets us test the physics of what we understand about how they move. Will they be different considering that the Mars atmosphere is less than 1% as thick as Earth's and the gravity is only a third that of Earth? I first became interested in working on the aerospace industry or the world of space in, uh, when I was in high school or in middle school, actually, uh, I received um, a sticker of the NASA meatball, and I thought that someday I wanted to work there. When I came to the United States, I was 17. I didn't have any money. In fact, I had $300 in my pocket, and I didn't speak any English at that time. So I had to figure out what I was going to do with paying tuition to learn English, going to college, that sort of stuff. Uh, I worked uh, four jobs and then went to college uh, full-time as well. So pretty much my schedule was uh, five in the morning and then go to college until it was uh, 4 p.m. and then work from 4 p.m. until two in the morning every day and then on the weekends just chime in more hours. <laughs> in fact, when I told my dad that I was going to work for NASA, he was very worried because he thought that that was a dream that was not achievable and that I was going to feel very disappointed because I couldn't get to it. But uh, I'm glad I proved me wrong. <laughs> so as a Latina in NASA, I think that we need definitely more Latin people in our group. Uh, I am one of the few Latin people in the group, uh, and uh, I think that we bring a great perspective. Third world countries, like my country, for example, we had uh, you have to think about money, you have to think about the fact that you want to accomplish something, but you don't have all the resources. So it forces you to think differently. It forces you to think, in my mind, outside the box. So I would like to be an astronaut at some point in my life. I think that the career path that I had drawn for myself was to come to the US, work for NASA, work a few missions, and then eventually apply to be an astronaut.